Hello, and welcome to another logic tutorial with me, Ed the Shed. My name is Ed, but I'm not a shed. In this video, I will be talking about the Space Designer plugin, and I will go through as many of the parameters as I can. So then, you can get a better understanding of how this reverb plugin works. Before I start explaining all of the parameters, let's start by talking a bit about how it actually works. It works by mixing the signal of your audio with an impulse response reverb sample. Don't let that confuse you though, it's quite simple really. The Space Designer simply has tons of different reverb samples inside it that have been pre-recorded in real-life situations. So to create this plug-in, they have literally recorded the live reverb of many many different areas, inside and outside. They have also recorded samples of reverb inside different buildings and even different rooms, within buildings. So, the way it works is, it takes in the signal of your audio, and it mixes it with the selected reverb sample. This signal is then further processed through filtering, effects and DQ, which can all be adjusted separately by you. OK, let's get cracking, and to do this, let's start by doing what we always do, and break this plugin down into different sections. This way we can start tackling one bit at a time. So, we can break this down into five different sections. We have our main display, our parameter section, our filter section, our impulse response parameters, and our master section. Because this is such an intricate plugin, I might only have time to cover some of these sections in some good detail. But don't worry the rest will be covered in later videos. So for now, I want to talk about the impulse response section, because I myself, am new to this section, and it is rather bloody cool, I have to say. What this section allows you to do is, it allows you to use another audio file to mix for the impulse response. This function alone, makes the possibilities endless. To really show you what I mean, I have, as usual, made a small example. So, if I just quickly play the original sample over here on my range window a few times over, then you can remember what it sounds like. Ok here we go. Quite a chilling bit of piano, eh? So now I am going to come over here into my samples bank and select a sample at random. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can find something nice. Okay that sounds good enough for now, I chose it, because it is long and drawn out, like most reverb impulse responses, but you can use any sound you like so don't be boring like me, instead, try using audio samples that are bloody odd. Remember, the best music is different music. Now, if I go and simply drag this audio file onto our space designer, it will create an impulse response reverb sample for you. Let's have a listen now. Did you hear it? 
If you didn't, then pause this video right now and try it out for yourself. Don't worry I won't go anywhere. So, start up Logic and place an audio sample onto your arrange window and open up a space designer on this track or if you're a smarty pants then open a reverb on ascend. Then simply drag the audio <sighs> file you want to oh, use as your yeah. impulse response. Okay, so now you know how to add your own impulse response. You can probably spend the whole day just messing around with this function on its own. I personally find it more addictive than crack, just because each and every sample creates a whole different atmosphere for your reverb, it's bloody marvelous. But assuming that we have done this, let's now look at the rest of this section. First let's look at the three options that we are given. When we click on the arrow which is this tiny little one over here. When you click on this, it gives you four options. The first two options are exactly the same, but the second option gives you the choice of initializing the plugin. To those of you who don't know what it means to initialize something, it essentially means to use the default settings for the preset selected. So if you want to keep your settings, then simply use the first option, which does not initialize. If however, you want to reset, or initialize, the settings, then choose the second option. The third option is pretty obvious, but, for the special people that are watching, it simply shows you where the audio sample is stored on your computer. The last option is something rather special in itself. If I click on this option, it brings up a new window which is called, the Impulse Response Utility Window. Yes, that's right, the Impulse Response Utility Window. This little bad boy, actually lets you record your own impulse response which you can then use yourself. I will try and do a separate tutorial on this. But bloody well give it a go, because you simply can't get more originality than that, with your own reverb. This is the work of a true original nutter. Big in the jungle. Okay let's move on now. The next parameter we need to look at is the sample rate slider. This does what it says on the tin and it simply reduces the sample rate of your impulse response sample. By doing this, you will change the sound of your impulse response quite drastically sometimes, so it's good to mess around with this one for sure. So, I will show you how significant this is, by starting from the top and eventually going down to the bottom. Here we go. So hopefully you could hear the difference. The next thing to look at, is the length parameter. Pretty obvious I know, but it allows you to change the length of your reverb, you cannot make it any longer than it originally is, however, you can make it shorter. The longer the length is, the more CPU you will rinse, 
so it's always a good idea to trim off the extra fat. A fatty boom boom my sweet sugar dumpling. Gotta love a bit of reggae. Oh I nearly forgot, if you want to preserve the length of your reverb when you are changing the sample rate, then simply click on the button provided over here, to do so. Okay, time is of the essence, so I'll cover the last few parameters rather quickly. If you don't want to use your own sample to create an impulse response, then you can choose the synthesized option below. Think of this as a random reverb generator. It quite literally generates a new impulse response for you, every single time. Then last but not least, to the left, we have our imaging options. What's particularly nice about this parameter is that you can choose a happy middle point between stereo and mono, including true stereo. Can't say fairer than that really. Well, we managed to spend a whole video on just one section. So you can see that this is a very cool plugin, and personally, I am really enjoying this tutorial series, because as I'm sure you are, I am finding out lots and lots about this most wonderful piece of kit. Stay tuned for part 2, where we will nail some more sections. Thanks for watching, see you next time.